look and Owlbear is digging its beak into Riley's shoulder and she's just roaring back at it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and hi if you're new. Today I have something really exciting for you. This is a speed paint of Riley Renwood, the gun-toting badass blood hunter from our new D&D campaign, The Mark of Redman. Links to that will be in the description and new episodes do come out here on YouTube on Wednesdays. But making this even more special, I have her player, Panthera the Fairwood Witch with me today. Hi. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to be asking some questions about Riley and how you made her design. So first, I want to know, like, Riley has such a cool look and she has, like, these animal parts in her collection and it, her fighting style. Like, how did you get inspired? Like, how did you come up with her design? I think Riley's initial inspiration was pulled very heavily from uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you played it at all. Oh, I love that game. But um, I, I just love, it's so much fun. Uh, I love the story. I love, like, uh, the the Western vibes. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of kind of, like, living out on the land and, you know, doing what you got to do to survive. And the hunting system in that game is very fun as well. You can like harvest everything and you use that to, to piece together like trophies essentially in that game, right? That's one of the things yeah. that you can collect is like special armors done by trophy hunts and so on. So I was like, okay, this is this character is someone who's been living on her own for a long time, right? She's a blood hunter. She's kind of got those monster hunter vibes. Mm -hmm. So what else would she be doing? How would she be spending her time while she's alone out in the wild? And probably, you know, messing around with, with the stuff that she has collected right over the years. She probably mm -hmm. had sat there for many nights and just uh, sewing little claws and, and teeth and bones or feathers or whatever she might have come across in her travels into her attire because she doesn't really have a home. She doesn't yeah. really have like a, a place where she, she stores these things. So she kind of wears it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I love that. Like Riley feels so grounded and real. And I love that she's carrying her, her home with her and her, you know, her travels, her journey is like mm -hmm. worn in her hair and on her clothes. I love that. So what is the weirdest thing that she has in her collection? What's the strangest thing? <laughs> Oh, that's such a good question. I don't know if uh, I'll have to think about this. <laughs> um, she probably has uh, some like skeleton teeth and things like that. So like human oh. parts. Um, she definitely has a lot of probably like antlers mm -hmm. um, and standard like hunting rabbit pelt. Um, probably, you know, some wolf teeth yeah. maybe. You know, she is uh, pretty low level-wise, so I don't want to go, like, too ham. And like, oh, yeah, she's a big badass monster hunter. She has manticore <laughs> tail. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, um, she she probably has mostly fought, like, um, bandits as well as just, mm -hmm. like, creatures. Maybe, like, a bear might have been one of her, her biggest things that she's done on her own. So maybe some, like, bear claws and things. Um, yeah, I don't I have to think about that because I, <laughs> while she has a good backstory, I haven't really like thought about what missions was she on before yeah. getting with the party. So I'll, I'll have to think about her, that her, one. Her great epic <laughs> fight with a vampire or something. Yeah, ooh, uh, like maybe like she's got a werewolf tooth. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, like, if, if you do think about it, maybe that'll be a review for the yeah, campaign. I'll have to think about it. But um, That's exciting. we talked a bit about how you were inspired by Red Dead Redemption and how you chose Blood Hunter because of those Monster Hunter vibes. So I want to know, how are you building Riley? Blood Hunters in general are a little tricky because they're very constitution based. They can go either strength or dex. Mm -hmm. You also need high intelligence to do their blood magic, essentially. That's like what the DCs are, are using. So I like to play like swift characters. Mm. I'm definitely somebody who I, I like to be sneaky when I want to be. <laughs> I like to be able to do stuff. And so, and a little bit of this was influenced by, I didn't know um, the other classes of the party members going into this. Okay, so yeah. when it was the choice of doing like a strength based or a dex based, knowing that we had a cleric and a monk, you guys are both very one 
tends to be more whiz and strength, and then the other one tends to be very, like, dex and swifty, right? Mm -hmm. Um, there was kind of, like, a little gap where it's like, oh, maybe, maybe we need somebody who is more dexterous, like, sleight of hand almost a little bit. Like, somebody, um, who can fill a little bit of those gaps, and then definitely, um, the, the tanky aspect. So I went very con heavy with her. I went very dex heavy, um, taking like some proficiencies. And I think it was like a uh, sleight of hand and some of those like more, um, an investigation, I think was the other one. Cause she does need to have a decent int because of the Hemocraft. Mm, so yeah. I wanted her to be able to be adaptable and to, to help the party as much as I could. Um, where it seemed like we had very, very heal heavy, right? Very quick people. Uh, religious based maybe history based people maybe we needed somebody who who needs to like you know uh, unlock a door or <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that definitely shows because no matter what situation we're in it's kind of like Riley's always got something you know <laughs> and I think that that works a lot with her character too because being somebody who is on her own for so long she's not used to yeah. relying on other people so she, she needs to be able to get where she needs to go or to do what she needs to do in the way that works with her. So, like, she's not going to be a... She's kind of a jack-of-all-trades master mm -hmm. of none. Um, but she is a, a little strong, too, even though she's not. The only thing that really sucks with her is her charisma. She is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> minus two um, does not come in handy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, people still keep throwing themselves at Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Rugged charm. I was not prepared for that at all. I was expecting, like, man, I'm gonna have to keep my mouth shut because me as a player, <laughs> I'm such a talker. <laughs> I like, I love interacting with NPCs and everything, but knowing that, and this is me maybe metagaming a little more than I should, but um, it's hard for me to kind of role play a low charisma character because I'm such a talkative person. So it's like, how how does low charisma come off in this world? Like. Yeah. Is she just maybe very blunt? Does she like mm -hmm. stumble over her words? Is she just like shy? Like, like how? I feel like there's a couple different ways that you could go. Oh, for sure. Like low charisma, and it's it's difficult. <laughs> like I think the way that you're playing her, this this blunt, straightforward, no nonsense, and that dry wit. She's so sarcastic sometimes too. Uh, so I think it's coming across. I just think that okay, you have good. a magnetism. I don't know what to say. I hope that like even though she's low charisma. So, like, on the surface, people probably don't like her. Um, like, uh, first impressions do not come off well. But I, she's a she's a very loyal person, and yeah, she yeah. does care a lot for the people who are close to her. Um, it just takes a lot for people to get close to her. She's got, She definitely has, like, a spiky shell. She pushes people away before she lets them in. Because she's been hurt so many times, right? She's lost a lot of her, her loved ones in her past. Um, so she's definitely hesitant to get close to people, but... Once, once you've earned her trust, she's definitely like loyal to the end. Well, that brings up another thing I wanted to ask about, like Riley's personality is, when did you find her voice? Like, did you know going in that she would be this sort of rough around the edges gal? Actually, part of the initial plan for her character okay, when yeah. I was inspired by it. So once again, I was playing Red Dead Redemption. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was definitely an inspiration there. And also, oh, I forgot to mention earlier, but another big inspiration for her character is the Witcher series too. Yeah. Like just, and I feel like the Bloodhunter class itself is seems to be very inspired by them, or like the, was it the Grey Wardens from Dragon Age? Yeah, oh, like, it does they have all that kind of have that similar, yeah, where they're they're inflicted, um, and kind of like mon the monsters become the monster hunt. Kind mm -hmm. of thing. Always like drawn me to, and but. Yeah, with her voice, Red Dead Redemption was definitely an inspiration. There's just like some really cool badass female characters in that game. Oh yeah, Ooh, I'm thinking about Sadie. <laughs> yes, exactly. Sadie is a big inspiration. And then about that same time, um, the character Ash was introduced to Overwatch. So okay, yeah. Riley's voice is in particular very, very heavily inspired by Ash from Overwatch. Uh, just kind of like, go get him, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> a very uh, blunt, uh, not afraid to tell it how it is, loud, yeah, brash, I guess would yeah. be another way. But so definitely inspired by those two. And I feel like it fits with her personality oh, as for well, sure. too. Um, it's, it's an accent I've been wanting to 
play around with for a while, and I'm really enjoying it. I, I mean, I love Riley. I love what you've done with her. <laughs> I love your influences. All amazing. Okay, here's one that's a little bit about her backstory. So when we begin the story, Riley is the only one who's from Warheim from Harkinsborough, and it adds a really interesting dynamic where initially Helix and Inari are looking to her as the local. Like, why did you pick that as her hometown? So, I actually wasn't the person who selected it. I left that to our lovely DM. Okay, yeah. I basically described kind of, I knew I wanted her to be from a farm. I know I wanted her to have a large family um, and to kind of live outside of a small town. So I, I knew the dynamic that I wanted from mm. her backstory. And I basically asked MB, please pop me wherever <laughs> you see fit. Lots of, I would like some nice forested areas nearby, right? Because she's... Uh, grown up kind of in the wilderness, but kind of, you know, like outside of town, right? Like rough around the edges, uh, kind of survival, but also like, you know, had a home. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I kind of knew what I wanted vibes wise and location wise. And then Envy helped me select exactly where in the story uh, or where in the continents and in this world that Envy's created, that would be. Yeah. So it just kind of ha is happenstance that it's Harkins for us. So that all is all thanks to our lovely DM. <laughs> but I will say it's been very interesting and fun. It's definitely forced me to be prepared for more story points in Riley's, like backstory specifically. Uh, than I was initially prepared to tackle so early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, oh, here's your childhood friend. <laughs> yeah, like that, or like um, the family, like, yeah, her returning to her family farm has been something on my mind for a long time. And like, ooh, where might that come across in the story? And to have that be like the prequel episode? Yes, that was day one. <laughs> I feel like it's good. It's almost like a little bit of closure, but at the same time, it sparked like new curiosity yeah, like um, because it, things are not how she was expecting them to be at all. And on one hand, it's nice to know that everything has kind of moved on. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I do think that Riley is kind of bummed about it, right? Not to not have everything be almost exactly how, how she left it. But mm -hmm. it has been a long time, right? It's been, I think, like uh, story wise, it's 10 years since she left her farm. And so there's like a, a bit of bittersweetness to it, I guess. She's been wandering, kind of like doing her, her monster hunter kind of yeah. thing for a while now. Um, she's definitely lived on her own out in the woods for, for a good chunk of time. Um, it, the exact timeline, I think even Riley isn't exactly sure. Oh, yeah, that, that she's been that disconnected. But yeah, because being disconnected from just society for a while, like I... If I have like a weird week, I forget what day it is. Like I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, for sure. World where you don't have like a phone to check the date, right? And <laughs> knowing what year it is or what month it is, right? Like that's something that modern, <laughs> yeah. we don't really have that issue. So who knows what her concept of time was necessarily during that time. It's interesting to think about. <laughs> that's beautiful. Well, here's my final question for you. What has been your favorite thing about playing Riley so far? I think her interactions with the other characters. Oh, really? <laughs> it's so much fun, and I feel like there's such a cool dynamic. Like, Helix is very, like, aloof but caring at the same time, and kind of helps Riley, I think, refocus when needed. And, like, Helix is very um, strong morally. Both, both Helix and Inari both have very strong like moral compasses, uh, whether it's through Helix's like doctor code or through Inari's like deity worship. Mm -hmm. um, Riley is definitely like finding this a little different, right? Like she's she's used to having to deal with only what she wants, mm -hmm. not what other people want, and then also what other people's deities want or what other people, like, what other people signed up for or what, what contract they signed right so like for Riley to be like okay this needs to be done and then Helix to be like oh but that's against my code like that that definitely throws an interesting dynamic to her so I I love that I love I think that being around with Helix and Inari too Riley is learning to to relax more that it's okay to like have fun every now and then. Like everything doesn't always have to be so 
serious all the time. Because I do think she spent most of her time just going from one thing onto the next, pretty much. One one mission onto the next, or one hunt to the next, whatever it was. And hasn't really, like, stopped to get to know anyone. Mm. Or to, to see what, what other people are interested in. Right? Like, she knows her mission, but she doesn't necessarily know... What, what do other people do? What do normal people do? <laughs> like, so I just, I love all their different interactions. And I think that it's really hit her how it's immediately accepting both Inari and Helix are of her. Oh, yeah. Because she's definitely rough, right? She's rough around the edges. She's like how Barnaby treats her is how she expected everyone to be treating her. But to Helix and Inari to be so immediately welcoming and like almost like grateful for Riley's presence too. She's like immediately more bonded to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm for sure Helix is grateful for Riley. For sure. Her, that's so, like, <laughs> I don't think that she's used to people relying on her at all. And so for other people to be telling her that like, oh, thank you for that. Oh, we, we need you to do this. Or can you help us with this? She's like, or like, I feel like it's like, uh, she feels like now she has to take care of you guys. <laughs> These are mine and nothing can hurt them. I can't leave this group because an owl yeah. bear will kill them. <laughs> There's definitely like immediate responsibility, I guess, on her end. Yeah. So, which has been interesting and yeah. fun to play Easy around friends. with. Well, I mean, I'm excited to. Have more interactions with Ryan. Yeah, I can't wait for more to be unleashed, and, and we'll see. We'll see. Well. Thank you so much for talking about Riley and sitting with me here today. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, I really hope that you enjoyed this speed and I hope you enjoyed this interview with Panthera because it was awesome. And if you want to catch uh, both of us playing D&D, watch The Mark of Red Moon on Envy Wild's channel here on YouTube or on Twitch. And if you want to watch more of my speed paints, click on one of these little boxes over here or check them out on my channel. Okay, guys. Bye.